Hello and welcome to another video from the Marketing Study Guide. In this video I'm going to outline the main ways you can analyse a perceptual map, okay, so we can get the most value out of it. So I've got a series of perceptual maps just drawn up here. Uh, I've got two attributes in each case and the letters refer to the brands. So the first one and probably the most important reason is we're looking to have our brand to be distinctive and stand out in the marketplace. So generally on a perceptual map, you want space around it. You don't want to be crowded in by competitors. You want your own space, you stand out. So when consumers are thinking about you or a, a particular need, you're the brand that comes to mind because you're the only brand that offers that combination of attributes or particular benefits. Up here we've got letters A and B, two brands there, and they're positioned identically. Okay, I, could, I couldn't draw them over the top because it would be confusing, but to the mind of the consumer, they are essentially the same, and these are distinctive brands. So that's one thing we're looking for. The next thing we can do is we can overlay, in addition to brand positioning, is to overlay how the segments, our different market segments or our target markets, what are they looking for? What's the ideal combination? So in our survey where we're capturing this data, not only would we ask them to rate the brands, but we would actually say on this attribute, what would be the ideal? Uh, where would you, you know, like to be? So not everybody's going to pick a nine. So if you want a, a snack food, should it be salty or not salty, for example, nobody's, most people are going to fall somewhere in the middle. So we can then look at different segments and put this down as well. So I've got segment one, two, and three. Uh, and this is called what's called a joint space map. And I've got a separate video on that you can have a look at. So suddenly we've got A and B that were together. So it gave the impression almost that there was a, a lot of market demand and that was the best place to be positioned. But now we find we've got brand D position very close to segment two. So they are very happy because they're the only ones down there. Same with segment, uh, uh, segment three. Brand C is there. So again, they've got this great position. They're unique and they're positioned right on top of a, a market need. So tick, tick. And then we come over here and we've got segment one and we've got three brands that are sort of targeting it but nobody's got that positioning right. So we thought A and B were in great position because there must be a reason they're up there and positioned like that. And we find that they're not overly well positioned. So this means there's a big opportunity right here if these brands could restructure their marketing mix and their positioning to take that. So it, it feeds into our planning. We could also look at perceptual maps over time. So this is very valuable. So we don't just want to look at one point of time. We want to see how the brand is developing and, and evolving. And the same thing with our, our competitors. So here's, here's brand A. So I'm trying to replicate this AB position eventually. And A was over here with brand C at one point. And they have repositioned over several years to come up to here and brand B was already there and they've just sort of nudged up. So brand B tells me that they were fairly happy with their positioning, whereas brand A has, has dramatically revised or repositioned, we would call it. So depending on who we are, if we're brand A, is that our, our goal? Have we done well? Uh, and then we put that into our marketing reports to say, yes, we have successfully repositioned and all that money we spent with the marketing mix and promotional changes and positioning change has been successful. Or potentially this was not, not deliberate, this just sort of somehow happened because we have neglected the brand or we did things by accident. So is this good or, or not so good? And brand B, they've obviously been having a very controlled brand trying to maintain their positioning and drift it slightly. So maybe that's good, maybe that's not. But either way, we can see, depending on our brand, are we delivering on our brand goals? 
So we've got a time thing there. We could also add a time thing to these segments as well. So consumer needs change over time, preferences change over time. So segment one possibly was up here at one point and has drifted down in terms of their, their preference on this attribute. And that's why suddenly uh, they, they were well positioned, but a changing need. So that's something else that we could use time-based uh, perceptual maps for. We could also look at how we're tracking against our plan. So I've got A going up here, but given the segments down here, segment one, do they really want to go in that direction or did they want to go in that direction? Is there something that wasn't executed, right? Are we delivering on our, on our goals? So this is like an historical view and this is our, our future view, okay? You know, at this point they would have said, where do we want to go? We want to go here. And then we worked out, we ended up going here. And then we, we backtrack and go, okay, what, what went wrong? What do we fix? What do we do differently? And what we want to do with these two in particular is compare it or use other marketing metrics. So in particular, market share, marketing mix changes. And what we want to do is work out why. Why is market share going up and down? Um, why is our positioning responding to these marketing mix changes? So as we know, positioning is a combination of all our marketing mix elements, not just promotion or communication, but in our overall offering. So we can work out which parts of the marketing mix are impacting our perceptions of, by consumers and our, our in-market in positioning and how is that impacting our sales and our market share results. So we can, can construct by adding combinations with, with other information we have, some sort of crude marketing model. So we work out, you know, if we did this in terms of our marketing mix changes, then that's going to change our positioning in this regard and that will then deliver X dollars. So we get some sort of connection. And this is really where we want to go. Okay, a couple of other things to look at. If we ever see um, a map like this where we've got, these are just the brands, I haven't got the letters, but there's a correlation between these, these attributes, that tells me that consumers see those attributes as similar in their minds. So that may be helpful information because it's delving into how consumers think. So if we're up here and we're well connected to this particular attribute, which is essentially the same as I suggested, you know, we, we're owning that. We don't need to position on both if we're doing some form of communication. We only need to highlight one of those and we will automatically be connected with it. Okay, so it might be able to help simplify our positioning, our, our communication, or certainly it helps us understand consumer thinking. And then we could also look at different attributes, which attributes are important. So we, for this, we're looking at multi-maps, so more than one map. We've got data, so we, we keep changing these maps by adding a different attribute, and we construct different views. So initially, we had A and B as being side-by-side -side competitors, which is map one. But then we produce a different map that has two different attributes, and the configurations change. And suddenly for those two attributes, A and C are direct competitors and B is sitting out by itself. So by rolling, rolling through different maps, which I have a template for, which is in the link, you can actually get a different set of positionings. And through the combination of these maps, we could work out you know, how we fit in the marketplace overall. So multi-maps are very important, okay? looking at segments and we could construct not just placing the segments on but we could look at this map for segment one for segment two and produce different maps obviously we're getting a, a lot of maps here but again I, as i said i have a template that allows you to do that looking at it by time so we could overlay the time or have a series of maps that that show that depending on how many brands we've got listed we could look against particular competitors. So we might find for this map, uh, B and C are more relevant. 
and then we have a change of a map to change of attributes and then okay let's have a closer look at these other brands because they're nudging us or they're imposing on our positioning space for those so by competitors obviously we need to look against goals what we're trying to achieve very very important and I have various perceptual map tools. This is just one approach, the two axis map, but we can look at overall similarities, multi-dimensional scaling, um, and I've got a link to various tools you can use as well. And I would suggest you use more than one perceptual map approach because you'll get a deeper understanding of the marketplace. So hopefully that helps you with your analytics and insights. Uh, please like the video and subscribe to the channel.